Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to use Python to create a simple invoice generating system that does three things. First, it's going to take customer information and create an invoice in a Word docx document. Then it'll convert the Word document into a PDF file, the same invoice, but in PDF format. Last but not least, the system will use Outlook application to send the PDF invoice to our customers. Let's get started. For today's project, we'll use two libraries, Pywin32 and Python Docs. Let's pip install them. Pywin32 is for interacting with Windows APIs, which means we can use Pywin32 to control some of the Windows functionalities, for example, controlling a Microsoft Office program. And Python Docs is for automating Microsoft Word or any docx file in general. I have a beginner video on how to use the Python Docs library. Check out that video if you need help getting started with Python Docs. Both the Python docs and the Pywin32 library we're using today are a little bit weird in terms of their naming convention. What I mean by that is for Python docs, we need to type pip install python docs. Note there's a dash between python docs to install it. But when we use the library in our Python program, we need to type import docs. For the Pywin32, we need to type pip install pywin32. But when we need to import it, it's going to be import win32com.client. Now, because our invoicing system has three parts, we're going to create three separate functions with each function does exactly just one thing. The first function will create customer invoice in docs file format. And the second function will convert that docs file into PDF. And the third function will send the PDF invoice to our customer. Let's start with our first function to create the invoice. I'm going to have this pre-made invoice on one side of the screen and code on the other side of the screen. So you get to see how we are creating a Word document line by line. I'm going to make a function called make client invoice that takes four arguments, the customer's name, the product they bought, number of units, and the price per unit. So first we create a document object which represents the actual Word document. Then I'm going to add a company logo which is just an image file and this is just my channel logo here. And we can also specify the size of the picture. For simplicity, all my files and the Python code are inside the same folder, so I don't really need to include any folder path. But this is not really recommended because in reality, you will probably have files from different folders and you probably don't want to store the code and other files inside the same folder. But that's for another topic. Underneath the logo, I'll add a heading text that says invoice. Then we'll start drafting the actual body of the invoice. We'll start a new paragraph by creating the customer by their name. I will say uh, dear customer. And here we actually want to use their name in the invoice, which means we need to use a variable here. And whenever we want to plug in a variable, we need to add a new run object. If you need a quick introduction on what the run objects are and how to use the Python docs library, check out my other video on Python docs introduction. Then we'll say, uh, please find invoice for your recent purchase of something, which is also going to be a variable or a placeholder here. And in this case, we want to show the customer what they bought and how many units they bought. So it's going to be two variables here, one for the number of units and the other for the product name. So far, we've created the Word document up to this point. And let's add some space. Then we'll draw a table and put the product details here. I'm going to add a table with just one row and four columns. By calling the table.rows and cells, we can access each cell within a row. The first row of the table is going to be the table headers. And um, we're going to add that by setting the text property of each cell. And we can also change the font to be bold. Next, let's add another row to put the actual product information. We can add a row by calling the table.addRow method. And then similar to how we filled the information for the header row, we can now fill out the product detail in the second row. Here we'll do some text formatting using the F string for the numbers. When using string formatting, we need to first put a colon after the variable name. And the comma means that we want to have a thousand delimiter. And the F converts a number into a fixed point number. And this dot to F means we want to keep only two decimal points for this number. For the total price, we just need to calculate it by taking the number of units multiplied by per unit price. Now we're done with the table, let's add a few more spaces. At the end of the invoice, we'll just say thank you for your business and we look forward to serve you again. And we're done with the invoice, let's save it into a docs file. Take a look, not so bad. Now we're gonna work on the second part of the invoicing system, which is converting this docs file into a PDF format. We'll import pywin32 library and note here we need to import 
win32com.client. This part is surprisingly easy if you have a Word document readily available. And this function takes two arguments. First is the source file, which is going to be the docs file. The second argument is going to be the destination file path, which is the PDF file that we want to create. This win32com.client basically can interact with Windows APIs. And here we are creating a Microsoft Word object. Note this dispatch and then word.application. We're going to set a variable wd format PDF equal to 17. You might be wondering why 17? I found this documentation on Microsoft website. Basically, these are the file formats we can save as using the Microsoft Word object. And number 17 is the PDF format. Of course, you can save as other formats if you want. I'll put this link in the description below in case you want to take a look. First, we open the source file, which is docx invoice file that we just created using the first method. Then we save this Word document as a PDF format, and that's going to be the destination file. Then we close out the document and the Word application. So that was pretty simple, right? And let's take a look at our folder and the PDF file, which is exactly what we wanted. Next, We'll send this PDF file to our lovely customers. And we're going to do that by using the Outlook application, which is one of the Microsoft Office applications. Note, this is not the Outlook web email. Let's start by defining the function, which takes three arguments, the customer name, their email address, and attachment for the invoice. Again, we use the win32com.client object to create an Outlook object. And you probably already guessed it. If we replace this Outlook with Excel, then we're going to get an Excel object instead. The nice thing about using Outlook application is that as long as we have previously logged into our Outlook account, we don't need to worry about email authentication or login again. So I want to emphasize that to make sure this works, you need to log into your Outlook account at least once. So once we have logged in, we don't even need to have the Outlook application open. The Python program will be able to create an Outlook instance with our account and then send emails. This is just like whenever we click on the Outlook, it doesn't ask us to log in every time. This create item zero will create an email object and we can add the emails properties like to address, subject, email body, and add any attachment. Last but not least, let's send out the email. Okay, so now we have all three parts of the system ready. Let's test it out. First, we're going to create an invoice in docs format and then convert the docs file into PDF and then send out the PDF invoice. So here I'm just using my test email and let's run that. OK, so this works for one customer and now is your turn. Maybe you can try to implement a loop and run this through all customers on the list. Maybe you have an Excel file that stores all customer lists or maybe you have a database for that. Feel free to use my test email address for your testing. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up. I really appreciate it. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next one.